Hello everyone, my name is Jill Pelto and I'm a climate change artist. Today I'll be giving you a virtual tour of my art exhibition going up, which is at the Maine Coastal Islands Gallery in Rockland, Maine from July 6th through October 28th, 2021. And the name of my show is Data Reflections. So this is an example of one of my artworks, Climate Change Data. And as I'll be showing you in the gallery, this is like a lot of my work, communicating important environmental topics. So first up, this is my painting, Dwindling Migration. And this painting is about changing populations to caribou herds in Canada and how their populations are really sharply declining. So it's something I had read about in a book and really wanted to make a painting to communicate how drastically uh, those populations are dwindling and changing as a result of people. And so on top of the painting, I have this graph line that is showing the population drop specifically of one caribou herd in Quebec, Canada. And so imposing data on my paintings is what I do for most of the works that you'll be seeing today. And that's what I describe in my artist statement and how I combine art and science in my work. This is my watercolor painting Currents. And this is a recent painting I completed in July of 2020. And it's completed for the cover of Time Magazine issue that month. They do a specific climate change issue, so they reached out to me about doing this cover. And so that was obviously a huge opportunity for my career. And for the cover, I decided I wanted to use global data about climate change, so big topics like uh, sea level rise data and air temperature change. I also have a graph about uh, global increase in renewable energy. And so I have five different graph lines on this piece that was used to compose the full image for time. Next, I'm bringing you back to some of the paintings that were really formative in me making science art and specifically data art. So these were some of the first pieces that I made when I was finishing my art degree at the University of Maine. I did a double major there in studio art and earth and climate science. And so near the end of that time, I was figuring out how to use those double interests to uh, make art that communicated these important topics. And so these are screen prints of original watercolors I made at that time. And same for these three pieces. These are the very first three pieces that I made that used a graph directly in them. And so this is when I came up with this idea uh, in 2015 as I was finishing college and used that to communicate a lot of the things that I have personally seen and experienced with climate change for these paintings. And then on this wall, this is my new series. I just completed it uh, within the last couple of weeks. So I've been working on this, year, this series of five paintings for a couple of years. And this was my first major collaboration with a science research team based largely in Scandinavia. And so the five paintings are supposed to communicate the important research that they do. And their research is mainly focused on how plant species, especially the Norway spruce trees, will have to change where they grow, where they live as the climate changes and warms, and maybe living in different locations than they have in the past. And so that is the story from one to the next, and the scientists will um, get these paintings, it was a direct commission. And so I'll just take you down the line really quick of all of them. And underneath the paintings, I do have um, detailed descriptions as well. And then lastly, this is my painting Overgrown, which was a commission specifically focused on changes here in Maine. And so I have cutting across the page this orange area showing how much the temperature may be warming in Maine over the next century. 
and then different plant species that may be coming in and populating from further south as they're able to grow in a now warmer Maine. Thank you so much for coming on this virtual tour with me. I hope if you're able, you can come see the show in person. Again, it's July 6th through October 28th, 2021 at the Maine Coastal Islands Art Gallery in Rockland, Maine. This, I'm Marnie Sinclair and I'm here doing a show with Sally Lockridge and our the title of our show is Home Place and um, it's all about habitats and the creatures that live in the habitats and um, my work is the wire work and Sally does the paintings and um, we're delighted to be here at the Coastal uh, Wildlife Refuge. Thank you Marnie. Um, we are delighted to be here, and um, this is an example of one of the pairings that we did. Our idea was to pair one of my paintings, which shows a main natural habitat, with a sculpture that Marnie has done of a creature that might live there. So this is a picture of Smutty Nose on Monhegan, um, paired with a cedar that Marnie has created. Monhegan is filled with birds. And in the painting, you see some of the gulls, and here we have the sea duck. So this is um, a puffin that I made to complement uh, Sally's environmental pieces, and the, particularly this rock, rock uh, ledge here with the surf. And um, the puffin is such an iconic uh, bird here in Maine that it seemed appropriate to have that. Sally? All three of these pieces are from my stays on Monhegan as well. And again, the birds are prolific there and puffins are iconic in Maine, so we wanted to feature that. So this is a, a galloping Mustang, and I, it was inspired by this road through this, uh, I think it's a, a blueberry barrel, isn't it? Yeah. It's, and um, it just seemed like a good pairing for the color and, and sort of the activity of a horse on the road. Marnie's got it right. We also have next to it this one called Night Vision, um, which is the quieter, um, the quieter scene in May. But certainly there are both, there are horses out on the hills there too. So the Raven is ever present all over the Maine, as far as I can see. And so it seemed like it would be appropriate to put it with any one of these three paintings. And so that's what I ended up doing. And, um, and then this bear, this is a little bear cub that would, you can imagine him in the blueberries, looking for blueberries. I was thinking of the blueberries for Sal, that, that wonderful book for children's book. And then this, this is a sheep that could be easily grazed in any one of these environments. This is a little wall sheet that I made, and I was interested in doing, um, seeing if I could do foreshortening. Um, and so that's, this is my attempt in it. And the sheep is uh, chewing her cud. <laughs> <laughs> this one that Marnie mentioned, the blueberry barrel, I'm not sure the bear would find many blueberries left in the fall there. Good try. Um, I just like to picture, imagine the bear sort of ambling, ambling through the barren. Um, or through this one over here, which is a marsh area. So um, this is a farm, the hill farm that Sally made, and um, I made this cow that I thought would be appropriate to have her kind of hanging out at the farm. And then these are uh, these are other sort of farm-like areas, uh, particularly here with the, with the crows. And so I, I, the rooster could go with either one of these or all three. And then and then the seagull up here seemed appropriate for this sort of aerial uh, image up here. Um, 
since the seagulls seem to be everywhere. Marnie's right, seagulls are everywhere in Maine. Um, this picture over here, Tangle, is on the back side of Mount Egan, and this is the top little guy is Manana, where every night there are many, many gulls. Um, and again, the farmland with the cow and any other farm creatures, including a rooster, which you can imagine. that I made that usually, I don't know if they peep in the summer looking for little folds and things, but they certainly do in the winter. And this, so I was really happy to see this painting and to pair the fox in particular with this painting. There's another snow painting that's here where the fox could be leaping among the trees and diving. I love having seen videos of foxes leaping just like Marnie's and diving headfirst down into the snow. This is all my imagination, a nighttime moon painting of a garden. my moose and he is um, about to bellow and I thought with his water paintings it's sort of quiet water um, this would be appropriate for him because they tend to love to be hanging out in that kind of terrain so that's that's the moose and then this is a, um, a, a heron in, in uh, breeding plumage and he would also be happy in a that kind of an environment. So um, both of these could easily be found in these two paintings. And then the, this is a flower, it's a marsh flower that I did in, in Driftwood. And we thought it was appropriate to have it with these other flowers. It's, um, okay. I particularly like painting quiet water scenes and agree with Marnie that it's to find a heron or a moose there would be wonderful. Um, I have seen lots of herons in quiet wood, but not the moose yet. As for the flowers, I've done a number of flower paintings, so we paired Marnie's marsh flower with my iris. So we wanted to thank Carney in particular for all of her help and assistance putting this show together. And we're delighted to be here. We hope that some people from the town and outside of town will come and visit this wonderful place doing all this wonderful good work to save the environment. I second everything that Marnie has said. I'm particularly helpful in thanking Carney for her assistance. Her assistance. Time and tide wait for no one. If we love and care about our children, we have got to start living in such a way that will provide a future with a healthy planet. Postcard Collage by George Jennings.
vanishing habitat. Rising sea levels due to climate change will flood many of the marshy areas where wading birds, like great egrets, forage for food. They may have to look elsewhere, and we will need to accommodate them in other spaces or lose them entirely. These photos are printed on aluminum by Gail Carlson. Maine brook trout. I think brook trout are one of the most beautiful fish in the world. Here in Maine, they are especially important, as Maine is the largest repository of pure native brook trout broodstock in the United States. While these fish are incredibly tough, they do require certain conditions, including cold, clear water protected by forest canopy, which are threatened by climate change and other anthropogenic stressors. The tagline for my business is conservation through appreciation, and through my art, I aim to educate and bring awareness to some of the challenges faced by aquatic ecosystems. Watercolor on hot pressed paper, Karen Talbot. Hurt country. The challenges of reversing the effects of climate change during the current political unrest are wreaking havoc on our country. Oil and cold wax on board by Karen Kohlberg. Second look. Look to the future by learning from the past. Photography by Roberta Bauman. Sea grasses. I could spend all day swimming over shallow seagrass beds. These ecosystems are one of the most productive on earth, but they are also one of the more vulnerable. Sea grasses are plants, not seaweed. They have roots and leaves and produce flowers and seeds. Growing in salt and brackish water, sea grasses are usually found at less than three meters in depth, but some are found at depths approaching 60 meters. The tropical Pacific is home to the greatest seagrass species diversity. It is estimated that global seagrass coverage is disappearing at a rate of somewhere between 1 to 2 percent per year. Because seagrasses are foundation plant species and essential to coastal food webs, their loss has wide-ranging effects on other species and ecosystems. One of the biggest threats to seagrass is terrestrial runoff. Excessive nutrients from fertilizers and other pollutants can cause algal blooms that choke seagrasses of necessary sunlight. I made this photograph in Moreau Sound, where the beautiful opening of a World War II film, The Thin Red Line, was filmed. It is a magical place on land and in the water, with both healthy seagrass beds and coral reefs. Unfortunately, it has also been the site of ethnic tensions and violence. Photograph on canvas. Rhett Talbot. Global warming. Your great grandchild is asking you, what did you do to stop the world warming? Oil on paper by Sherry Deck.
Thank you for coming on our virtual tour. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel, FOMZ NWR, and remember to support this wildlife refuge with your donation. Go to our website at www.maincoastislands.org. Thanks again.